Hello, thank you for joining me. So in this video, I'd like to show you a little bit about uh, using the gear I make. This is prompted by a question from uh, one of my students. Uh, that person wanted to see how to, at my suggestion, how to get, put together some gears in a very simple way. It's still kind of early on our SOLIDWORKS experience here, so I suggested just doing plain discs with uh, an axle on it and maybe a marker on it so we can see what's actually happening with the, with the, the supposed gear and uh, using a gear mate in order to uh, drive the design a little bit. So, what we have in here, we have uh, a gear base, uh, we have our 2 inch gear and our 6 inch gear, and uh, we have various uh, mates associated with that. Uh, the base is fixed, it's got that F uh, next to it, in regard to the marker and, uh, and right next to the part name. And then uh, we have two underdefined uh, elements in here too, so when we move one wheel, one gear, the other gear moves too. And it's a 1 to 3 ratio, so as a smaller gear, the 2 inch gear moves around 3 times, 2, and then 3, then they match up again. So it's a 3 to 1 gear ratio, and that's determined by the geometry of the gears. So if you think about the gears, what we have in here is uh, essentially the intersection of the pitch diameter of the top gear and the pitch diameter of the bottom gear. And the pitch diameters are like virtual intersections between um, you know, both gears, They're like tangent to each other. And uh, it is, uh, helps determine uh, the actual size of the gear and the gear ratio that uh, results from that. And we'll get into that a little bit more when we get into our gear design a little bit later in the quarter. But suffice it to say, what we have is gear made in here. So before we do that, let's go ahead and take a look at the gears. So you may not uh, know how to really put one of these together in a very simple way. It's just a simple extrude, uh, no revolutions here. But uh, we have a base sketch, and it consists of an outside uh, and an inside uh, circle, uh, both uh, concentric with each other. And because I didn't do anything additional here, uh, I didn't choose any additional contours here, what SOLIDWORKS says is it kind of creates a donut in here. Uh, when it uh, runs across the line, it needs to do an extrude, and it does, uh, you know, put some substance in here. But if it runs across another line, before it gets to the other side, it puts in a void. So it kind of creates a little bit of a donut, as it did here. We put in an axle uh, by using a slight contour in that. So we actually chose the inside circle in here as our uh, slight contour. We chose the region that's inside of that. Uh, we actually drew on the front plane. We sketched on the front plane, so we did a mid-plane extrude on that and went out two inches. And we put a marker in here. The marker is kind of interesting. This is the one thing I want to show you. It's a simple line. If you look at that, that's a line that goes uh, from, uh, it's a vertical line, coincident with, uh, you know, with the origin. Probably doesn't need to be coincident here, but it's a third of uh, three-tenths of an inch from, uh, from the origin and two inches long. But the unique thing about this is it's not enclosed to geometry, it's just a regular line, so it's going to be a thin extrude. If you look at that, it's a quarter of an inch thick, off in this direction. But now there's this thin feature down here. It's a mid-plane thin feature. It's mid-plane, so what it does is it's going to go to that line and put as much substance on the left and to the right of that line, so it maintains its symmetry, and I made it a tenth of an inch wide. So that's, a, that's an option you can use. You don't necessarily always have to have enclosed geometry, but if you don't choose that, uh, you'd have to, if you don't have enclosed geometry, you have to use a thin feature for that. And since it was the only choice, it's kind of grayed out check mark down here. So green check mark. There's our six inch wheel, but because the geometry is so similar between the six inch wheel, friction wheel in a way, and our two inch friction wheel, we created a two inch configuration and we just changed some of the dimensions on these other items. So if we go back to our future manager tree, click on the, on the sketch here, what I did is I right clicked on that dimension and I want to toggle that between the two inch and the six inch configuration. You'll learn about this when you get into that section of the videos, but just to show you real quick, we can configure that dimension and you have a choice. For the two inch wheel, we want to make that two inches. For the six inch wheel, we want to make that six inches. So if you want to change that, just click inside of that Good, okay, and now our two inch wheel is, uh, is three inches. So let's go back. Let's uh, right click in that dimension again and configure that dimension and change that, that, that back to two. And good, okay. At the same time, we're going to change one for the six, too. It's just a faster way of doing it. So that's our gear. Let's go ahead and close that out, and we'll go ahead and save that, too, and see what it looks like. So. There's our assembly. Let's uh, let me show you how to put uh, the gear I made in. Let's go ahead and delete that one. When we delete it, then the, the wheels are free to spin as they desire. If you want to start in a very specific location, let's go ahead and put a temporary mate in here. 
and make these parallel to each other or coincident. Okay, let's make them uh, coincident. That sounds like a better thing to do. Green check mark. Now that we have that lined up, we can suppress that so we could use that later. Now let's put in our gear mate. We're going to go to mates. And this is a mechanical mate, so go to gear mate. It's going to be this one. Selections. It's looking for either an edge or a sketch. So we're going to choose an edge. We're going to choose this edge. And we're going to choose that edge. Uh, the edge on the, on, the, on the big wheel and uh, an edge on the smaller wheel. So 6 to 2. And now it knows what the ratio is. So it's automatically put in that uh, 6 to 2 ratio or 3 to 1 ratio. And that's, that's it. So now when we do the green check mark, we have no more mates after that. When we move one wheel, it moves the other wheel. Pretty nifty. Alrighty, I'm going to do the bevel gear one too, so make sure you see that, and we will see you on other videos.